Dean 22, take six, sound 146. Has there ever been a director who's made a more memorable entrance to the world of horror filmmaking than Sam Raimi? From his low-budget Baptism of Fire to helming one of cinema's biggest franchises, we open up the Necronomicon to find out how a nerdy kid from Michigan forged his own blood-soaked path to Hollywood and brought his best buddies along for the ride. A Michigan man from birth, Raimi's passion for movie making was ignited the day his father brought home a brand spanking new video camera. By the time Raimi was in high school, he was already making Super 8 movies with his newest buddy Bruce Campbell, striking up a lifelong creative partnership that would become the stuff of legend. Bruce Campbell starred in every Super 8 movie that we made because, very simply, he was the good looking one and still is. Together with Campbell and Rob Tappert, the fledgling director and his ragtag crew would make their first horror film in 1978 for just $1,600. Within the Woods was a 31 minute film, which managed to raise some much needed funds, but more importantly, it gave potential investors the confidence they needed to back Raimi and his producing partners on something far bigger and bloodier. We wanted them to give us money for nothing, for this movie that might be successful, might not. Mm. Okay, okay lay, lay it down. Ready? And yes. A small gang of mostly inexperienced cast and crew, alone in the backwoods of Morristown, Tennessee, working and sleeping in a small remote cabin. What could possibly go wrong? Scene 101, take two, sound 1000. Rolling. Ready? Scene 19, two, sound eight. She's dead! Scene 68, FD, take three, sound 1086. Scene 68, FD, take four, sound 1087. Take three, sound 366. Several torn eyelashes multiple makeshift camera gimbals, a severe lack of showers, frequent illnesses, and countless arguments later, the battered cast and crew would emerge from the wilderness after what Campbell described as 12 weeks of mirthless exercise in agony. That agony would eventually lead to ecstasy for Raimi and his fellow producers, with the momentum behind the utterly original film carrying it to Khan and box office glory, garnering praise from the likes of Stephen King along the way. After a brief sojourn on the poorly received crime wave with Joel and Ethan Cohen, one of whom had helped write and edit The Evil Dead, Campbell and Raimi would return to their beloved cabin in the woods with the 1986 cult classic Evil Dead 2. Groovy. We couldn't get the rights to our own movie, which is the most ridiculous thing ever. So there's a big debate of is Evil Dead 2 a remake or a sequel? This sort of sequel took a more comedic approach to the material, introducing killer one-liners and slapstick humor while losing none of the glorious gore in part due to the presence of makeup whiz Greg Nicotero. And of course, Raimi's signature directorial flourishes were back in a big way. I mean, seriously, let's see Scorsese pull off that shot. Despite the continued success of the Evil Dead series, Raimi was still yet to prove himself on a big studio film. So he set to work adapting one of his favorite comic books for the screen, The Shadow. But when he was unable to secure the rights, he did what any sane director would do. He bloody well created his own comic book character. From director Sam Raimi. Darkman. Darkman was a critical and commercial success, spawning its own franchise and earning Raimi the brownie points he needed to forge ahead with the next entry in his now beloved horror trilogy. This is my boomstick! Army of Darkness changed up the formula yet again, adding in a fantasy time-traveling element to the genre melting pot. The talented Raimi clan also continued to evolve, with not only Raimi's older brother Ivan helping to co-write the film, but actor Ted Raimi once again landing a bit part in his big brother's movie, a tradition that's continued to this day, along with the appearance of Raimi's 73 Oldsmobile Delta, simply nicknamed the Classic. With the adventures of Ash somewhat out of his system, Raimi would spend the remainder of the 90s swapping genres and enjoying a period of sustained studio success in the likes of The Quick and the Dead, For the Love of the Game, and the underrated A Simple Plan. Jesus! That was an insinuation! The closest thing Raimi would come to horror during this time would be The Gift, a perfectly serviceable thriller from a director who seemed quite at home in the mid-tier movie space. That is until the early 2000s, when a film that had been stuck in development hell for nearly 25 years somehow became caught in Raimi's web. Peter? Yeah? Are you alright? Uh... I'm fine. 
Together with the first X-Men film, Spider-Man is attributed with the rise of the modern superhero blockbuster, and at the time it not only held the record for the highest grossing opening weekend, but also the sixth highest grossing film of all time. Spider-Man 2 followed just two short years later, in what is arguably the character's greatest on-screen outing. With a handful of masterful set pieces and a strong, empathetic villain, it was clear that Raimi had managed to strike the perfect balance between his small-scale scares and big-screen spectacle. The equally successful but poorly received Spider-Man 3 would mark the end of Raimi's tenure with the Web Slinger, but his producing duties as part of Ghost House Pictures would keep him working in a different capacity in the years that followed. Founded in 2004 along with Rob Tappert, the production company spearheaded a new wave of horror remakes, including a gritty new take on The Evil Dead, which was intended as a soft reboot for the franchise. Not another Time to go to sleep. While a second installment never eventuated, Campbell would once again brandish the boomstick for the TV series Ash vs. The Evil Dead, with Raimi directing his friend once again in the pilot episode and exec producing the show for three seasons. Yeah, looking good. As for Raimi's name appearing on movie billboards, the 13 years since Spider-Man 3 has seen him helm just two feature films, the brilliantly gory Drag Me to Hell, which showed his twisted sense of humor was still very much intact, and 2013's somewhat misguided Oz the Great and Powerful. But with talks of another Evil Dead entry on the horizon, and Marvel tapping his talents for the new Doctor Strange sequel, you would have to be a downright deadite to think Raimi is done with movies just yet. There's no greater thrill in the world to watch him scream. You just kind of giggle in the background. <laughs> it's great.